I've learned how to fat score and use a weight tape on my horse and I've discovered he's overweight. So what can I do now? There are a number of different things you can do to try and help lose weight off your horse. And as I mentioned earlier, one of the key things is most leisure horse in the, horses in this country will get more calories than they need just from grass alone. So one of the key things you can do is restrict their grazing. And there are a number of ways you can go about doing that. One which most people know is to strip graze. But one of the things you can do, rather than grazing in a straight line when you strip graze, you can actually fence your paddock into a U-shape with the gate at one end and the water trough at the other because that encourages the horses to walk about 25% more. And when they're walking, obviously, they're burning calories. Or you can fence off a square in the middle of the field and give them the outer edge to walk around for the same reason. You can also try using a grazing muzzle on your horse. They're not suitable for every horse, but most of them will get used to them if you give them long enough. It's very tempting to give up after about half an hour when they look at you with pleading eyes because they're not quite sure how to use it yet. It's very important to give them time to adjust, providing they're not in danger of, of causing them themselves any problems with it. Another way that you can restrict their grazing is by putting more horses in the same area. So if you've got a number of horses who need to have a reduced intake, you could put them all in the same field, providing you're maintaining the grass correctly, picking up any droppings and making sure there aren't any poisonous plants in there, for example. There's no reason why you can't have more animals on the same field. And it doesn't necessarily have to be other horses. You could put sheep or other animals in there. It's just more mouths eating the grass means there's fewer calories to go around, which obviously helps to reduce the intake. One other way that you can restrict their grazing, which might sound a bit bonkers, is to mow your grazing because that's just mimicking the way, mimicking having more horses on the field. But it's vital that you have a lawnmower that picks up the cuttings because obviously that can be very dangerous for them. But if they are getting more than they need and you haven't got more horses you can put out or you can't fence off a smaller area, you can go out with a lawnmower and cut the grass. Horses have evolved to eat for about 20 hours a day. So it's very important to keep something going through their system on a regular basis, otherwise you're risking other problems like gastric ulcers or behavioural problems such as weaving or crib biting. If you feed your horse hay, if you soak that hay for 12 to 24 hours, you're actually leaching out almost all of the calories that are in there, which makes it the horse the equivalent of celery. And that means you can give your horse a nice big amount of hay without adding to any weight problems they might have. But one of the important things to remember if you are feeding soaked hay is that you do need to supplement vitamins and minerals because you will be leaching out all of the nutrients as well. You can also feed oat or barley straw as an alternative to hay if your horse can manage it. The only thing with that is it's more fibrous than hay, so horses with poor teeth do struggle to eat it sometimes. So you would need to check the length of the fibres coming out in their droppings, because if they're more than a couple of millimetres long, your horse is struggling to grind them up and you can risk colic. And if that's the case, obviously, oat or barley straw isn't the way to go with that particular horse. We all know that exercise is key to any weight loss, but believe it or not, the best exercise you can do to lose weight from your horse is walk. And I don't mean a nice little bimble along with your hand on the buckle of the reins. It's got to be a really good, brisk walk. It's very, very tempting to start doing faster work such as trot and canter to, to burn a few more calories. But what happens is you actually switch to carbohydrate as the energy source rather than fat. I know a good brisk walk is a very boring thing to do, but there are ways you can make it more interesting and build more walk work into your daily routine. Using some poles, for example, to make it a bit more interesting for you and for your horse. And most of us have to work to keep our horses. And it's trying to fit in that extra exercise through the winter months. But there are things you can do, such as leading your horse around the field two or three times before you bring them in if you're not able to ride them when it's darker. Feeding is obviously another consideration. It's very important to feed for the work that your horse is doing. And that might mean that hay and grass is just enough. It might mean that you need to supplement with a hard feed. And what, I'd, what I recommend is actually contacting the feed companies to find out what they mean when, they, when they're referring to light, medium and hard work. Because there might be quite a difference between what you think the amount of work you're doing is and what the feed company would mean in relation to the quantities of, of particular feeds. And it's very important that you make sure you're giving the right amount because if you're giving a little bit extra every time, a bit more than your horse needs every day, that can make a very big difference. It's also very important to weigh your feed. I know it sounds incredibly boring, but it's amazing how quickly half a scoop can creep up to three quarters of a scoop or more. And, and very quickly you're feeding significantly more than you mean to. Another tip you can do with that is actually to find a container that holds exactly the, the quantity of feed that you want to give each time. And then there's no way that you can overfeed. 
If your horse is struggling to cope with the amount of work that you're doing, if he's running out of steam part way through, it's very, very tempting to start feeding them more to give them more energy for the work that they're doing. But it's important to remember that energy actually means calories. And if you've got a friend who was slightly overweight and training for a 10K run, they were running out of steam halfway up the road, you probably wouldn't suggest that they ate a Mars bar before they went out. If your horse is overweight and struggling with the amount of work that they're doing, it might be necessary to cut back on the amount of calories that they're getting so that they lose the weight and build up the fitness and that would give them the energy for the work rather than giving them more feed and more calories in order to achieve that extra energy. You mentioned the improvements with rug technology. Has it really made that much difference? The rug technology has made a huge difference because we, historically we always had to feed our horses more during the winter to keep the weight on them but because they're keeping a lot warmer with the new technology in rugs they don't necessarily need any extra feeding during the winter to keep, to keep the weight on so any extra calories that they get that they're not using to keep warm just gets laid down as fat and that means rather than coming out of the winter slightly lighter uh, so they can cope with the flush of grass that comes through in the spring they're coming out of the winter carrying more weight and it becomes an ongoing cycle of sort of increasing weight throughout the year. There are obviously some horses that do need to have rugs on, but there are a couple of things that are worth remembering when you're thinking about whether you really need to rug your horse. It's very, very easy for us as horse owners to look out at them standing out in the cold and the wet and think, God, I'd hate to be out there without a coat on. But there are a couple of things to remember. One is that horses already have waterproof coats on, so it's not the same as it would be for us standing out in those kind of conditions. But also, the bulk of a horse's diet is made up of fibre, and fibre is digested in the hind gut and the process of that digestion generates a huge amount of heat. So they kind of have their own central heating system. So when you're looking at your horses out in the field, if you can imagine them with the old ready brick glow from the adverts that used to be on television, that's a really good way of, of remembering that it's not the same for them as it would be for us out in the same field. I'm not saying don't rug your horse. What I'm saying is have a think about whether or not you really do need to rug, whether you're rugging because the horse needs it or whether you're rugging because you think you would in the same situation. And if you do need to rug your horse and your horse is carrying a bit too much weight, think about whether you can get away with wearing a lighter weight rug rather than having a nice big snuggly duvet type one. If you do make any changes to your horse's diet or routine, it's very important to give them time to adjust to them. And that can take anything up to a couple of weeks. Once you've made those changes, you do need to keep a regular monitor on your horse, so use the fat scoring and weight taping that we've explained previously to make sure that they're going the right direction. But if you have got an overweight horse that loses a significant amount of weight, it's very important to remember that you may well need to get their saddle refitted because their body will change shape dramatically, and if you've got a badly fitting saddle, that can lead on to several other problems. Another thing that's very important to remember is that food doesn't mean I love you. We all tend to use food as a reward, but just try and find other ways to show your horse some affection. Where can I go if I'd like some more information and help? You can obviously contact various specialists such as your vet, farrier, saddler and nutritionist, but if you'd like some more advice from us, you can call our advice line on 01953 497 238 or visit our website at www.worldhorsewelfare.org.